The Honourable Member for Calgary Elbow. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thousands of Albertans continue to struggle with addictions to opiates and other substances. Not surprisingly, this has led to an increased demand for residential treatment facilities, several of which I am proud to say are in Calgary Elbow. But in conversations with some of the highly professional addiction treatment agencies in Elbow and beyond, I learned that there is no provincial regulation in this area. Anyone can just hang a shingle and call themselves an addiction treatment facility. To the Associate Minister of Health, it is amazing to me that Alberta doesn't regulate something as critical as addiction treatment. Do you have any plans to address this and when? The Honourable Minister of Health. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and to the member for the very important uh, question. We uh, certainly are moving forward to expand opportunities for opioid dependency treatment and, and for uh, supports for those who are struggling. Just yesterday, Madam Speaker, the Associate Minister and our colleague from Sherwood Park, uh, Strathcona County, Sherwood Park, we, uh, were in that community to announce that there is a whole new uh, range of uh, opportunities for opioid dependency treatment, Madam Speaker, something that we know is going to save lives, that we're working to ensure that we can continue to expand access in community as close to home and through uh, the established patient medical home as whenever possible. Thank you. First supplemental. With respect, Madam Minister, this question is about regulation. We've already had one particularly egregious case in this province when Addiction Canada facilities in Sundry and Gleeshan were shut down following a suicide of one of their clients. Later, it was revealed that the facility's owner was facing drug trafficking and fraud charges in Ontario. Again, to the Associate Minister of Health, you said over a year ago that you would make changes to ensure addiction treatment facilities are regulated and Albertans are protected. What specifically have you done this past year to address this, and when will we see regulation? Minister of Health. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. And, uh we are certainly uh, in partnership with the Minister's uh, Emergency Opioid Response Commission, working to address a number of factors, including ensuring safety and, and uh, oversight of all these facilities. Uh, Madam Speaker, in terms of uh, exploring uh, additional supports, we have uh, invested significantly in opioid dependency treatments, supervised consumption services, and are continuing to expand opportunities for all Albertans to have uh, the uh, care they need where they need it. And we uh, want to get to the point where, just like you can with uh, smoking cessation in other areas, your first stop is your patient health home, your family doctor, and additional supports are available from there, Madam Speaker. Second supplemental. Let's try one more time. You're not anywhere close to answering my question. Mr. Spe Madam Speaker, there are many industries in this province that are regulated by the government. They include hairdressers, auto mechanics, massage therapists, and so many more. But for some reason, addiction treatment remains totally unregulated. The job of government is to ensure unqualified or unscrupulous operators don't take advantage of vulnerable people. Again, such a critical area. Residential treatment is proven to work, and I am a big proponent of facilities that allow people to recover with dignity in a community setting. Again, to the Minister of Health, will you commit here and now to requiring addiction treatment centres to be accredited by Accreditations Canada or another reputable agency? Minister Health. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and we certainly uh, take the members' um, uh, advice under your advisement. We're working to make sure that we've got uh, opportunities for all, uh, Madam Speaker, and certainly when public funding is available, uh, it should be put in a way that uh, ensures safety for all, as well as when individuals are reaching <coughs> into their own pockets, Madam Speaker. Uh, like all Albertans, I want to ensure that it, when uh, somebody I care about needs uh, medical help, that it's done in a safe and respectful way, and I welcome the recommendation from the Honourable Member, and we'll be happy to report back on progress from uh, to this House, Madam Speaker. 